Hi Ladybirds, so for our story today, um, or for our story time, I've actually not got a story at all. I've got an information book. Our information book is um, here and it says, The Great Big Book of Space. And this book was absolutely amazing flicking through it. But so, so interesting. Because when you fl flick through, once again, like we did learn quite a lot about um, last half term, there is a contents page here. And some of the things in this contents page are so exciting. It talks about galaxy families. What are galaxy families? That sounds really fun. Starry night, star clusters. It talks about planets. So it's got information on Mercury. It's got information on Venus, Mars, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn. So really, really exciting. Now, what I thought of is because um, we've been starting to learn about planets quite a bit this week, and we've done a few planets challenges, um, that we'd maybe dip into a few planets um, today. And we'll look at some of these ones. I can't read the whole book today because do you know what? It's got more than 116 pages. 116. I think it's a number. So this one will be a great book for us because we can dip in and out of this one um, over a few sessions, I think. And let's have a little look. Um, I think, why don't we start with Mercury? Because Mercury is the very first planet away from the sun. And in that little rhyme that I um, taught you, where it was my very easy method, and that begins with my and my's Mercury. So it's been our very first planet, the closest planet to the sun. Now it's page 38. That's a big number, isn't it, for me to find? Our numbers are helpfully here at the bottom. So that's what I'm just saying. This is true. I haven't got the right one yet. That's Mars, though. Ooh, right. I'll we'll look at Mars later. Let's see, but 30... Is it 36? 38. 38. Right, here we go. Mercury. Make sure you can see. Mercury is the planet closest to the sun. It orbits the sun. Oh, do you remember that? I'll put you a little bit on that page. The orbit is when a planet is moving around the sun, a little bit like when Mercury is moving in the year 2000. It orbits the sun incredibly quickly, making four complete journeys around it every year. Wow, so every time the goes around the sun, Mercury's already going around four times. That's quick, isn't it? With Mercury so close to the sun, it never leaves its path in its glare. It moves so quickly it can only be seen from Earth six times a year for two weeks at a time. During these times, it's only visible before sunrise and after sunset. Mercury is the smallest planet, or it is the smallest of all the planets. It has a very thin atmosphere and it has no weather at all. It has no weather. So imagine having no wind, no rain, no sunshine, no snow, no... Gosh, what must it be like? It must be really weird to be on that planet, mustn't it? With no atmosphere to spread the heat around the planet, there is a huge difference in temperature between its day and its night. Oh, so that means it must be really hot during the day because it's so close to the sun. It be oh, very toasty. But at night time, it must be freezing cold. Its sun-facing day sight, uh, side becomes as hot as an oven at its highest setting. Wow. While its night side plunges so around twice as cold as the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Oh my gosh. Oh, what's this? Oh, I wonder if I'll say this right. This is a new word for Mr. Briscoe, so I'm not sure if I'll say it right. Paloris crater. So, a little bit like on the moon, right, of course, I've thought. On um, Mercury, there's craters. The craters look a little bit like um, 
a little bit like rocks that have gone into the side of the planet and made a, an indent, made a, a mark. <laughs> Close up of an exoskeleton showing the effects of the impact. Pecto craters, Mercury's rocky surface looks a lot like the moon. Yeah, that's what I just thought. The craters were caused by asteroid impacts. City sized chunks of rock. Wow! Some rock that's the size of a city. Imagine some rock that maybe is as big as London or as big as um as big as Norwich flying through the sky. Can you imagine Norwich flying through the sky? I don't mean the football team, I mean the actual Norwich. Some of these were made many billions of years ago, shortly after the solar system formed. The planet's biggest crater is a giant star that was caused by an asteroid. It's called Calo Ooh, this is the one I'm not sure how to pronounce. Calorois Calorois? I'm gonna guess it's Calorois. And the whole of Kansas USA could fit inside it. Oh my god. Wow. That's absolutely incredible. A really interesting bit on our planet Mercury. Right, let's just see. So we've done Mercury. What other planet could we do? Should we maybe look at Earth? Because Earth is our planet, so I feel like it's important to look at our planet. Now, to get through this information book, I can flick through, and I just had a quick flick through to see if I could see some bits of Earth. But sometimes it's also helpful to use the front, so I'm just going to check if I use the contents to make sure I get the right place. So on the contents page, so we'll see. Oh, so there's actually quite a bit about Earth. We'll do a little bit about... Um, Earth and the Moon first, but there's loads about Earth we could look at. Earth 44. Let's see, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, there it is. Do you recognise that picture? Because that picture there is our blue planet. Now we're known as the blue planet. And, oh. It is a beautiful, beautiful planet Earth. I'm still in love with how Earth looks and it's wonderful. Planet Earth is the largest of the four inner planets. So that means for those first four planets, we're the largest one. Do you, can you think at home what those four planets are? From your learning, maybe you'll know those then. Along with its satellite, the moon. It orbits the sun once a year. The surface of the Earth is called the crust and is a thin layer of rock. It includes the continents and the ocean floor. Beneath the Earth's surface, it is so hot that it places solid rock melt into a flowing liquid called magma. <laughs> oh, and now that's really cool as well because I know that someone in our class is really excited. In that volcano, so we need to expect a little bit of learning in there from someone. And this tells us a little bit about that layer there, doesn't it? So, because beneath the Earth's surface, so beneath the floor, down, down, down into the Earth, it's so hot that it places solid rock melt into a flowing liquid called magma. That's so cool. Magma continually churns beneath the Earth's surface and crushes on the solid crust. Earth's crust is patchwork of large plates which slowly move against each other. When the plates collide with each other, they crumple. So what that means is, is that these little, um, if you can see there, there are some lines in there, you can see. And those lines underneath the Earth, they're like really, really, almost imagine them like Lego bricks. Like really big Lego bricks, and then and they're one single piece of a Lego brick, and then they move together sometimes, and then they rub up against each other, or they um, go um, move each other. When the plates collide with each other, they crumple. This pushes Earth's surface upwards to create a mounting range 
such as the Himalayas, where thin ocean crust is forced beneath thicker continental crust. Wow, it's very exciting. Let's have a little look a bit more about the moon now. The moon is almost as wide as it can last to. It orbits Earth once a month. No wind ever blows there. No clouds ever appear. Oh, and what planet was that like? With no wind and no clouds. That was that first planet we looked at, do you remember? Mercury, because Mercury had no water. I'm not sure Mercury had any clouds. No clouds. Life never developed on the moon. There is no life there. Soon, some parts of the moon will be covered with asteroid craters. There are so many large plains and gardens where it will be lava. Once thought to be snow. Oh, again, that's a little link to lava. How exciting. Well, that was really, really interesting. Lots more questions, I think, and lots more things that we'd like to know. And we'll have to come back to this another day, won't we? And have a little look um, a bit deeper at some of our learning. But really exciting that maybe you could think about some of the things you've learned from our information book today. Maybe about Mercury and the weather, or lack of it. Maybe about the Earth and the fact that there's plates that are a bit like big giant Lego bricks that all join um up beneath the Earth's surface. The fact that the moon has got craters. Lots of interesting things. I hope you enjoyed that, Ladybirds. I look forward to sharing another exciting video with you. Bye.